Folks, you better listen to what God tells you to do. You better not ignore his arrows of knowledge. He, he created the universe. He knows what he's talking about. He created you. You're not here by accident. You think he doesn't know what he's talking about? When God tells you something, he has the knowledge, not you. Jonathan's arrows say, I'm trying to protect you. Think about it. Jonathan could have not followed through with the agreement. He could have chose to do something different, but he followed through with what he said he would do. He was trying to protect his friend. They're friends. They're brothers. They love one another. He's trying to save him. Verse 17, now Jonathan again caused David to vow because he loved him, for he loved him as his own soul. Verse 34, so Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger and ate no food for the second day of the month, for he was grieved for David because his father had treated him shamefully. That, that's a friend, a friend that's, that, that doesn't show loyalty to his own father because of his spiritual condition and gets so angry that he can't even eat. That's how angry that he was. Why? Because he wants to protect his friend, David. Folks, that's a good friend. Jonathan isn't going to let harm befall his friend. Folks, a good friend will tell you when there is danger. A good friend will try to protect you. Haven't you ever been driving down the road and someone like you don't even know is coming towards you and will stop and roll down the road like, hey, the road's closed up there. You don't want to go that way. You ever had anybody do that? You're the one or two people like, Psh, who they think they are? Honey, we going that way. And then you get to the roadblock and then your wife says, why didn't you just listen to that other guy? People that don't even know you try to protect you. So why would you not listen to a friend that has knowledge that's trying to protect you? John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this than to lay down his life for his friends. Jonathan put himself in danger to protect his friend, and now the arrow flies and his voice declares, I'm protecting you, friend. I'm telling you there's danger. Don't come. This is why David could say things like Psalm 138, though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies and your right hand will save me. See, David was smart enough to realize that God will use whatever he needs to do to protect his people. Yeah. David understood after the fact, he's like, Psh, I don't want to tell you, man, I was in the field one day and Jonathan made a thing, shot an arrow, called out, and I didn't die that day. Yeah. I listened, I was protected God will use what he needs to use to protect his people. And in this instance, God used Jonathan. Think about it. This whole story, the whole like sit through for five minutes talking about the scriptures can be summed up in the simplest of terms. The arrow and the yelling was to protect David. That's all it was, to keep David from being killed by Saul so that David could become king. That's all it was. He was going to be king, and he couldn't go back to where Saul was and get killed. And so his friend is protecting him from death. What does it mean to you? I am not Jonathan, you are not David, and Saul is not out to kill you. But do you know what is out to kill you? Sin. Sin wants to destroy you. Everything. It wants to destroy your marriage, your health, your life. Satan does not want you to serve God. So he'll do whatever he can to try to throw it into your life to get you to stop serving God. The greatest arrow that God is sending into your life is to avoid spiritual destruction at all costs. Will you listen to the arrow?